Hello, Few Candy here, and welcome back to Funilla County. And last time out, we built ourselves this massive forestry area on the peninsula at the end here, complete with a little local village around the waterfront on the outskirts. And I'm really enjoying how this came together, in particular watching all of the traffic flowing over this junction with the forestry in the background is immensely satisfying indeed. And traffic's actually running pretty smoothly in Funella County. I can show you that right now. If we go and take a little look at the traffic menu, we're at 91%. There are little areas of red, but frankly, like, I don't know what it says half the time. Like, there's no traffic jams on any of them. This bit is definitely the busiest here, going out to Franklin's Farm and out to Brick Lane Bakery as well. But traffic may change after this episode, I'll be honest, because today we're going to be focusing on this little area over here and putting in a really rather large factory district, complete with rail cargo yard as well. Going to be attempting a cargo yard in vanilla. It's going to be interesting, but we should have fun with that. But of course, that will have a massive influx of traffic to this specific area here. So we'll see how the city copes with that later on. But before we start today's build, I just want to say that we have reached episode 11 of Funilla County. So if you would like to download and play the save file of the city in the current format that you see right here, right now in front of you, that is now available on the workshop. A link is in the description below. You can go have fun with it. And please do come and join us on the Discord as well, because I would love to see your build alongs with this city. I will be releasing that save file every 10 episodes. Patrons of my top two tiers do get access to every single save game episode, but just every 10 for public workshop consumption. Okay, so starting off our factory district, of course, I have cleared out all of the trees to give us a nice clean area to work with. We definitely don't want those sitting hidden underneath our factory buildings, e eating up gameplay memory. <laughs> so they're gone. So that gives us a nice clean area to work with and in here I would like to put in three large factories because there's quite a few here that we've unlocked and that we can actually now use based on the resources that we do have in the city. So firstly we have got the furniture factory of course with our forestry area we need planed timber and paper for that no problems there. We also have the household plastic factory which we have thanks to our makeshift oil area <laughs> it's going to be a while before we reach any actual rural resources so we're just importing the rural resources and converting that into plastic and petroleum so we can now have the household plastic factory as well alongside the toy factory or two that's paper plain timber and plastic we've also got the printing press again we've got everything we need for that uh, lemonade factory we need to wait for because we don't have glass as of yet we need an all area for that but clothing factory is another one we can also have because we've got the farm area as well we're doing pretty well for industry and that is what is boosting this massive budget like i don't think i've ever had 14 million for a population of less than 50,000 before um i am quite slow on the detailing so it does build up over time but it's thanks to having quite a few factories in here already we've already got two of them in there and three industry areas for this size of population is uh yeah quite a lot <laughs> uh, so we could also have soft paper factory and food factory we've got everything we need for all of those can't have the modular house factory yet but the ones i'm going to go for i'm going to go for furniture i'm going to go for a larger one being the clothing factory which i think would be quite interesting there and then also the household plastics we're going to save the toy factory because i think this is an amazingly cute building and also the printing press but elsewhere in the city, I think they're quite nice to be integrated in amongst commercial or office areas, that sort of thing throughout the city, rather than being out in this big kind of hardcore industrial warehouse factory style area. Whereas these other ones that I have picked do look a little bit more in keeping with the style of the area that I want to go for here. So I'm going to save those for another time. So starting off with the road network, I would like it nice and parallel, of course, to our highway here and our ring road, which are already lined up really nicely for us. So let's come in and we'll just draw a road across here, uh, about out to there, and we'll disable this connection. We're not going to have that. They'll be forced to go through this crossroads that we have up here. Then I'm going to come down another 680 in cost and very slightly across it. Now, I'm not entirely sure what this distance should be, so we'll need to come back to that in a second. And then we can go all the way down to our highway here, obviously not connecting in, because in this corner is where I would like to place the furniture factory. So we take a look at the orientation of it, we can sit it in almost right up next to the highway here. If we take a look at it, it's got this amazing wood vision sign on the side, so I always like to place it, kind of pride a place with that sign out onto a main road like this. When you're driving past, you can't help but miss this massive wood vision advertising board on the side of the factory here. So I think that's really quite nice. 
And then in this space, hopefully, if I've measured it correctly, we should be able to fit in our clothing factory. So I'm thinking like that lined up with the furniture factory there, because the reason for that is we then have these kind of industrial yards at the back here, although there is double fencing there. They're kind of sitting quite nicely together. And then in this little space, we should be able to fit a little warehouse yard here too. So I really like how they kind of go together. We've got kind of storage area there. We've got two large factories, again, with the orientation of the clothes factory as well. You'll be driving around the ring road here and you'll be able to see those big factory roofs followed by the furniture factory over there. And again, coming over the bridge as well, you just see this big load of huge factory roofs almost meshed in together there with this little kind of yard in between them. So I really like that formation. I like how that looks. It does require a bit of detailing around this. So I'm thinking the obvious thing here being a bit of airport apron. So if we go to that, we can stick one in here and probably actually put in a larger one at this point. Yeah, which would cover that entire area. We could even do it up the side here as well. Um, but we'll come back to that detail a little bit later on because we do have side doors here. So I definitely want to provide access for workers out here. Otherwise, they're just stepping out the door straight onto the grass, which doesn't feel too right for me. And then kind of thinking about, again, the view from this highway here, I would also like to add in a large warehouse at this point too. Now, these are huge, <laughs> but going really nicely with these factories. It's actually always bigger than the clothing factory itself. So, but yeah, again, next to the highway, it's really quite a nice feature here. We leave a little bit of a gap like that. Again, that kind of helps to vary it up so it's not solid wall all the way along right next to the road. You can just kind of see it peeking out over the top when you're driving along. So I quite like that there. And then finally, thinking about the printing press, I think we'll add it in down this end. Now, if we leave a little gap here, we'll be able to fit in some car parks there. Let's just go all the way up to the highway road for the second and we can grab the factory. So let's find the, sorry, not the printing press, the household plastic factory. I will correct myself. And if we add that in here again, like a slightly different gap to the highway, we'll just come back and we'll check our view and see if we like that. Uh, yeah, I really, <laughs> I really like the kind of variation with the cylinders there. And then coming up this side as well, you'll be able to very clearly see that Tech Vinyl Home Plastics logo as well, which I again really, really like. And because we've got these car parks out here, I think it would be really appropriate to put some car parking next to it. Definitely want car parking for the workers out here. Uh, I'm not sure about public transit and how much of that we will be bringing in. So it'd be worth having definitely a few car parks at least out the front here to mirror that. And then in terms of road connections, let's sort this out because we definitely don't want this here. So I think we'll come up just a little bit and then just bend it into the main road here. And then from this point, we could bring this road back and round behind here. I think we'll connect it straight into there. And yeah, we could bring this back and round the back of this factory. I'm just thinking, is there anything here that we need to pay attention to? There is a little back door, actually. That could make sense to have road access around the back there. So we'll bring that in for now and then we'll consider what we might put out here for detailing later on. Now, of course, with all of these factories, we do need more warehouses for them. So that's the next thing to have a little think about. Um, and I definitely want to incorporate different sizes of these warehouses. I'm thinking potentially a medium warehouse here might look quite nice. Again, when we place it in, we'll just check up against the road to see if it kind of feels right from all different angles, particularly street level. We've got a little space on that side, so it doesn't feel too crammed in, I don't think, to put it up next to the road like that. And then with this open side here, we could choose a little bit of industrial road, again, just to vary up the road textures, I'd say, for this. Let's bring that out to the end. And then can we add, I think, in a small warehouse backed onto by a warehouse yard here? Because then again, like those warehouse yards are pretty close and next to each other, so it doesn't feel too out of kilter. And again, to kind of help with that, so we've got the warehouse there and the yards around it, we could actually add in even more warehouse yards here, potentially with another little road. So if we bring this up the back here, actually, I don't think we've got enough space. <laughs> yeah, I've not left enough room there, so let's try that again. Yeah, it's not really going to be possible for us to get the fourth one on here with the road there. We could try by just putting in a small section of road and then see if we can get it in against it. Have to be slightly further over. So there is a weird sweet spot, yes, where we can fit that in. 
oddly, to be honest. I didn't think that was going to go in then. It seemed to be flickering backwards and forwards, but it does actually work. Uh, so let's just upgrade that to a two lane road there. And then we've got kind of four warehouses in back to back in that area. I don't mind that at all. I don't mind that at all. Now, if we just check on these factories, I'm going to ramp all of them up to 150%. That's one way that we can get in maximum profit from all of these. But if, let's just check on our products. We've got pet petroleum, plastics, animal products, crops, plain timber and paper. So we do need five warehouses for products here. So we could take all of these small ones for those. So let's go through these and we'll add in, so let's say plastics. In fact, we've got two loads of plastics and only one animal products, one timber, one paper, one petroleum. So let's make the slightly larger, small warehouse one, the plastics. And then let's go through these. So this can be animal products here. And then we'll make this one petroleum, this one paper, and this one plain timber. And then we've got one warehouse for each of the products in this area. And because we've got three large factories here, let's make this unique factory products so that we can store the products from here. If they're not ready to go out to commercial yet or the demand isn't there, they can store that in this warehouse here. And then this big large one, I think we're just going to go for commercial zoned goods and we'll leave this on balanced here. And then it can just be a place that we can store goods for commercial areas being made by some of our industry around the area because I will be putting in some more zoned industry around here as well just to detail up this particular area too but we're also going to move on and have a cargo rail yard out this side so definitely having a large warehouse here where goods can be stored is going to help the system over this side of the map. Now before we move on I'm not going to forget to delete this little section of road here and then we'll just redraw that in so it's nicely in line with the edge of our factory here. So we'll just bring it up to the edge of the concrete like that. And before we go on to the cargo rail yard as well, there's one other thing I want to have a look at here. I kind of want to stop cars from parking on this road. They've got loads of car parks right there. So let's change this road now to one with a wide pavement here. And I'm going to do exactly the same outside the furniture factory this side as well. They've got spaces there, so they really shouldn't need to be parking on that road. I am wondering, can we squeeze in one more little car park this side? We can. <laughs> there we go. And that just sort of helps to smooth out that concrete edge there as well. And then things like this road, making sure that's coming up level to the factory here again, really helps smooth out the concrete edges as we go round. So it feels quite nice and neat that way. And then just looking at the junctions as well, let's go in here and let's turn off traffic lights. I don't want traffic lights on these unless it becomes super busy. We really don't need them in our city. So it's kind of a general good idea to turn them off when you can remember to do so. Now coming on to the cargo rail side of things over this side. Now I would actually like that aligned to the grid that we have got for our forestry area here. So I'm actually going to take these fences as a guide and we're going to snap in roads to the guidelines of these. So we'll get that nice and straight which that is not. <laughs> I can see that that fence is now highly not straight. <laughs> so, so we'll do something about that later on, but that will do for now. Uh, let's bring it across a little bit further and then we're going to try and get it as close as we can to this junction. Again, I don't mind a slight kind of change in direction there. I think that that is okay for this. And then I'm going to bring in a road across this way. I'm going to delete out this one. Because what I'd like in here is a combination of the new warehouse with railway connection asset, which is going to sit nicely in here like that, because our railway is out here. And also the cargo rail yard as well. So we're going to bring in two of them here. Now I want to be a little bit careful with this. So I'm thinking behind this rail yard, we're going to bring out a small road like that, that we can have some industry on. And then we'll bring out the cargo rail yard behind it. Now we do need eight blocks for the cargo rail yard. So that should sit in this space, still leaving space for a little bit of zoning around it as well. So let's go ahead and grab the cargo rail yard. And we're going to place this in alongside this road. And interestingly, we can actually snap it into, <laughs> into the road here, but it doesn't have barriers on the end, which sort of concerns me from a detailing point of view. So I'm actually going to move that. So let's pick that up. Let's shift it back this way a little bit because then we do get a four block in here and you'll probably know what I'm going to try and do. But what I really, really want in here is that four by four 
asset that we desperately tried to get in down here with the containers in it because it makes a really really nice extension to the side of this rail cargo yard when you don't get access to those container props within the vanilla game so let's hope that that's put in there we'll see what happens and then i'm thinking around this side of it what we might actually do is have a little bit of office zoning so if we can try and get some nice zones in here then we'll go ahead and do that so i'm thinking like ones that aren't kind of too big so let's see what we get if we do this. I'm thinking maybe as well, leave a little bit of open concrete space this side of it. For things like loading. So if we go back to our airport aprons. We can't put this over zoned areas. So let's just pop this in here because that does sit in quite nicely with our zones. And then we can have a little bit of office zoning that side of it as well. Um, so let's see what we get from that. And I'm also thinking maybe this end, let's utilise the Railroads of Japan car park here and have a little bit of fenced-in secure car parking for the staff of this rail yard here because we do have the fence around the back of it. So it feels secure enough for parking away from the rail line that's sat right there. And obviously we'll be good for some of this office zoning as well for the workers there. We do have more residential demand than industrial, so it may be tough getting these to zone in today, but we'll see where we get to. Now, in terms of the rail connections, this is an interesting one because this rail line is not going to stay here. We're actually going to have our airport out here. It's not going to be a massive airport for Funilla County. It's going to be a kind of more sort of local one. Obviously taking international flights away from the city, but that is going to sit in this area. So this rail line ultimately is going to be diverted along the coastline here, flowing around this way. Probably have to get rid, unfortunately, of some of this little rock detailing along the coast here to get it in. But until we unlock some of these squares around here, it's not possible for us to do that now. So we'll kind of wait till we put the airport in before we go ahead and do that. So these connections onto the main rail line will be temporary for now. So <laughs> bear that in mind. They might look a little bit rough, but we will be getting rid of them later along the line. So let's bring out firstly the cargo rail hub like this. And we're going to just bend it round to flow alongside this track for a little bit. We want to make sure with the rail connection, so we're always leaving kind of enough space for trains to fit on each section of our junctions, because otherwise you start to get problems. So if we bring it in like that, let's go down and make sure, yes, the rail lines are connected. So you'll be able to tell that if you can see the tracks going across the junction. If you do a junction like, uh, I'll show you an example like this, you can see the tracks are not connected, so that would not function as a rail line. So that'll do nicely for there. We obviously need to get it in, in the other direction as well. So I want to make sure I'm leaving enough space for a full train here before we sp kind of curve this off. Now, this is going to be tricky. So I'm thinking for now, let's take this rail line here. And we're actually going to divert it the other side of this rock. That's very steep here, but we can make sure that because it will be smoothed out and refreshed and redone later along the line. And then this way, we should hopefully be able to bring out a slightly better connection for our rail this side. And in fact, we may have to get rid of this rock regardless anyway. So yeah, we'll get rid of it for now. That's absolutely fine. And we'll put it in later on. But that gives us enough space for a train on each part of this connection here. So that should work quite nicely. And then for the warehouse rail yard, we do have this awful <laughs> diagonal connection which we're going to piece in here, and I'm going to go out to an actual rail yard over this side with just some decorative tracks. But what we can also do here is connect it in straight out. So you don't have to use that diagonal connection if you don't want to. So this is particularly useful when you don't want to use that connection. So then from here, let's bring this straight out. And again, this is going to be super duper duper messy. <laughs> And we will fix this all. Trust me, this is not an ideal rail solution right now, but it will work for what we need for right now. So we're going to bring this out and connect it into there. And hopefully, yes, those tracks should go off to go off in that direction. So that should all be functional, even if it looks absolutely god awful. <laughs> Okay, so for our rail yard, let's extend this out this way. And what I would like to do is bring out small connections from here that is going to flow into some just like decorative track pieces, basically. So we're going to get the angle right for this. We're going to snap in vertically and we're going to bring this straight up. Now, I really do want these level with this road here. So I think we're going to have to use road guidelines. Yes, let's do that. We'll bring out some long sections like this and then connect these in afterwards. So let's just trim that back for a second. So we're just going to do long sections of track, like so, 
right up next to each other in a nice parallel line. We can trim down the ends in a second to get them all nice and uh, smooth together. There we go. Then we've got all the catenaries nicely lined up for those as well. And then we can start to draw in connections like this. But what we need to do for these is just trim them back slightly. So we'll bring this one out to here, that one slightly further back. And then we should be able to get our curves in to connect these up. So really interestingly, the traffic, when I press play, was going through our airport apron over this side and kind of counting it as a building and an exit point for our cargo rail yard. So I've actually got rid of it and I've put in zoning here. And it does seem to have fixed the problem, but it's very weird that it would think that it can go through zoning like that. I don't think I've ever seen that before. And we have finally got the asset in I want here. Yes, let's click Historicalize on that before it disappears. We really want those crates in there. Although I kind of think the other orientation would be better. So let's actually delete that out. Let's firstly, behind it, I'm thinking a car park again. So let's put that in here. And then if we go to this road, let's remove zoning from both sides of it and we'll just upgrade this. And then hopefully that should now, when we finally again eventually get it to spawn in, orientate with the front this side. So the containers will be the same orientation as we've got on the cargo rail yard there. Now I did also just change this configuration here. And with a bit of playing around, we got this in. <laughs> so that is all in how we want it for now. Now a couple of other assets I'd like in this area. So let's actually just continue this road on up this way because I would really like to bring in the fire helicopter depot. A few of you, and now we've got no zone. <laughs> so I can't get used to the zoning adjuster. Let's change that. Now a few of you commented we really needed a fire helicopter depot and I couldn't agree more to be honest. Um, yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of trees in Funella County and it would be very, very helpful indeed to have this in. So I think absolutely that is a must have in this situation here. I'm kind of hoping that round the back of it, we can hopefully fit in a little gravel road here between the fire helicopter depot and our rail tracks, which we can, yes. So we can bring that back around and along the back of it like this. We'll connect it in down here. Let's go back to our roads again now. We'll bring out a connection down the side of the fire helicopter depot here and bring this up this way. Now I'm thinking we could add a little bit more storage for some of our industries out here. So one thing I think would look quite nice next to this rail yard is the oil industry storage, these arched way ones. So I'm thinking a couple of those in there wouldn't go amiss. Now they have got gravel bases to them as well. So actually having the gravel road in there kind of suits it. And perhaps we can bring in a gravel road connection for it down the side here. And then on this end, what I would really quite like to add as well, again, storage from one of our industries, is this big wood chip storage plant. Because if we put that in here, you can see that it's got this kind of like big sort of crane thing to it, which I feel like goes quite nicely with the rail tracks next to it. And then when it's full of wood chips as well, it should look pretty interesting there. Now I am going to leave this actually on empty for now. I don't really want resources being stocked up here from outside. Oil we're going to have to leave on balance because yeah, we need to get the raw oil in from outside because ultimately we're not extracting it right now. But that will do for there. And then just thinking about the other industries that we have already got in as well, we could add in some farming silos here for raw crops. Again, storage before it's exported out of the city, hopefully <laughs> not imported in this case. And then potentially, again, because we're really lacking on those raw resources for oil, another oil storage here up next to the train tracks, I think would look quite nice. So there is quite a lot of detailing to put in and around these areas, but I think for now that gives us a nice little setup here. Let's just go back in and trim this road down just a touch. Let's turn off road guidelines for this and road length. Actually, we can have a little bit more freedom over it. We'll just bring it up to the edge of that oil cavern there, which again, just helps to keep our roads nice and tidy. And we'll grab our gravel road and we'll bring that right up against the rail lines there as a kind of access road to that rail yard. Lots of detailing to be done, like I said, but it feels like it is starting to come together. I'm not super loving some of these assets. I don't mind this one, the little fence at the back up next to the rail yard. I'm not opposed to that. This one's not too bad either. 
not keen on those. So let's get rid of those. We could maybe leave a little bit of space here. And we'll see what comes in there. Don't mind this one, yeah, so we'll historicalise that one too. Now, again, because it's so much cargo here, I'm thinking a few warehouses wouldn't go amiss, and they do obviously go really nicely with the cargo rail yard as well. So let's bring in a small warehouse and a warehouse yard at this point. Then we've got a little bit of room for zoning in this side afterwards too. But there is one more asset that I would like to put into this area. So let's draw in a connection back road for these. Just like that. And then we're going to bring off a nice fancy entranceway for our building that we'll put in here. So we'll do something like that. It might not be the right size, but we can come back to that and adjust it in a second. But what I would like to use, which is from the high tech content creator pack, is the semiconductor plant. Now, this content creator pack, you get loads of these unique buildings. And in particular, this TV station is one of my favourite assets in the entire game. And some of these are so diverse, you can do really different things with them. I made a whole Google complex out of some of these and some modern flats out of some of these in Oridon in my modded city, which you can check out on my channel if you want to. But yeah, I think this would absolutely not go amiss here. Now, annoyingly, it's not centralising to our road there. So let's just trim this back and make sure we can get it central. Like that will do nicely. I think this sort of fits in with the industrial vibe here. It's a slightly more modern kind of warehouse factory that we do have here and again we've got a little bit of surface to sort out at the back of it but it's pretty cool indeed and we can do some nice detailing around it to kind of frame it and give it a bit more purpose in the area but I think that that will sit in nicely next to our rail yard here so of course we're getting an absolute ton of traffic as some of these storage areas fill up but once they have filled up this should all calm down we've got trains coming in here which is great to see we do need to select some goods here, so I'm just going to go for commercial zone good for this. I think that'll be the most useful thing there. And then here, I'm wondering what we have an excess of, actually. So if we look at some of our other warehouses, we've got tons of petroleum that we're not using very much of. We're using a lot of plastics. So perhaps we could have this one on petroleum to send that out of the city. And then with our forestry area, I did realise we haven't really got any warehouses actually specifically for those forestry products in this area we obviously do have these and as you can see both of those are now filling up pretty rapidly so it would be good to include some more here so i don't know why that's on animal products we're going to change that we're going to put this one on plain timber and it would be good to have another paper one somewhere if i get the feeling we're probably not going to fit it into our formation this side so it could be we add in another small little warehouse down here just to mirror the back of our cargo warehouse with the rail connection this side and then we can also add paper to that now we're getting an absolute backlog of traffic as well here so let's have a little think about road directions as well so we'll go to our one-way roads for this and actually i really kind of don't want parking on a lot of these and we're basically going to force them one way around this system so we're going to force them one way into here all the way down this way again this way uh same goes for here and out this way so that's all going to be one way and i am going to make it one way up past this cargo rail yard here so they can come in and kind of turn around different directions up in all these points i'm okay with that but they need to be coming in here and out this way and we'll let this cargo terminal come in and out of this junction here which will kind of relay a little bit of the traffic coming through this junction over this side so hopefully that should help things a little bit obviously once all of these stop importing and calm down so once they're all full up a lot of these trucks will disappear and they won't be here so we'll come back at the end and see what the traffic's like hopefully once they're filled up and it is now time for a lot of detailing around here so we will be bringing in obviously our forest brush a little bit around the semiconductor plant as well as some more parking some additional zoned industry as well in some of these areas just to help detail it up and yeah, a bit more rocks surface painter here and there just to kind of finish off this area now this rail yard is going to be going out onto the cargo airport side of things over this side kind of merging onto that so we'll need to keep that in mind and we won't be detailing really much beyond that boundary for now
So oh, there we go, and I am still waiting for this asset to spawn in. Is this going to be the time? No, it's not. <laughs> I can tell already. I've been waiting for possibly an hour of in-game real time on three speed, which means we're now up to almost 16 million. <laughs> and our population has also grown as well, so we're edging closer to that 16,000 target that we're trying to get to to open the next tile as well. But let's just have a little detailing review. So starting off over by the warehouse rail yard here. And we have done a lot of vanilla surface painter with the gravel paths here. And I think it's not possible on console because of the collision mesh. But we have also managed to squeeze in between them a couple of little bits of overgrowth and grass and rocks. Then over here we kind of filled out the middle of it with a few little rock patterns here. with Again with overgrowth and a bit more vanilla surface painter to bring in that gravel texture. But all in all, I think that actually looks pretty cool around the rail lines over here. The real shame we don't have enough space between these rail lines to do exactly the same thing here. So this has just been unfortunately concreted over. But I guess you can kind of see it as potentially little raised key loading platforms next to the rail lines over here. I did also add in an earthquake sensor just to kind of indicate a sort of signal box maybe at all of these different junctions in the rail line there, which I thought was nice. And a little Railroads of Japan police box. I absolutely love this. I've kind of used Railroads of Japan a little bit overkill in this build because here they do give us parking decals with the vanilla game. Unfortunately, they don't prop in nicely with vanilla. All props kind of snap to a specific grid, which means they look pretty wonky there. <laughs> but if we can kind of look past that, I've again used the orange ones here to indicate loading bays around the outside of the factory using a bit of the airport aprons to plop the concrete and kind of decorate that up, fencing around the edge. But I think all in all, that kind of gives it a little bit more importance, just extending the asset there. Totally possible in vanilla. Well, this is vanilla. So never be afraid to kind of detail up your own assets, particularly now that we've got those airport aprons and all of the cool parking decals and the little parking entranceway as well for railroads of Japan. It looks not perfect without mods here, but it indicates what we want, which is the main thing. And if you are looking to pick up any of the City Skylines DLCs or indeed railroads of Japan, please do consider checking out my instant gaming link. It is in the description below. Super, super big discounts on loads of games and it also helps to support the channel. 
So yeah, we finished off the semiconductor plant with a little bit of tree detailing and a couple of, again, plazas from the railroads of Japan out the front here, which I think looks pretty nice. I kept a lot of this open concrete area around the main cargo rail yard here, which I thought was kind of needed. Obviously, it would be ideal if we had some more container props and things to plop around this to make it a little bit nicer. But all in all, I think it works out pretty well indeed, actually. I'm really kind of pleased with this area. Just finishing it off with a little bit of overgrowth and trees around the entrance here and some fencing up against the road, which I did decide to upgrade to six lanes just so we could try and get some dedicated turn lanes in there. Traffic has been building up a little bit here. It's not too bad actually at the moment, but yeah, <laughs> it got a bit intense and most of it was forestry products actually exporting. So I have gone around and turned off some of our raw forestry product extractor points. So these tree plots here just so we can balance it a little bit better. We really need to get actually some more processing buildings in. So things like the engineered wood plant um, or indeed the biomass pellet plant as well. And that way we can burn some of those raw products rather than exporting all of them. <laughs> but it has helped with the traffic turning off some of those and it really hasn't affected our budget at all. And then coming over to the factory side, I just finished this off with a few more car parks, a bit of airport apron here and there. Again, this nice kind of natural border up against the highway over this side as well. So I think that's looking really quite nice. This drive in is kind of cool now, actually, with all these factories up against there. And then we did put in a couple of offices and some service buildings here too. So important we've got fire and police in this area, which also helps to level up some of our zoned buildings that we have too. And then actually we got in three of the same building with the awful horrendous clown face, but we don't have Bob in vanilla, obviously, <laughs> to banish the clown. So we've gone with it. But I kind of like the way they've actually stepped back in this case. So three different variations of the same asset here has worked really, really nicely indeed. And then again, just a bit more of the Railroads of Japan car parking spaces with some fencing around the side of the clothing factory here just to finish that off and just more general overgrowth. I did also use this little prop building from the Railroads of Japan here because we can place it further away from the road, extend it out, I put a pathway in front of it to kind of surface paint over that, put a little bit of fencing around it and changing up this road I thought that kind of signified a sort of security entrance checkpoint for our factory area there. That's what I was trying to go for at least. So yeah, there we have it. Um, yeah, really, really pleased with this, particularly this little bit of detailing over here. I love how this looks. Very rough and ready around the rail lines out here. And eventually we will get <laughs> that asset in, hopefully. These two spawned in relatively easily. This one, just an absolute pain in the butt. <laughs> So we do need a name for our factory district, so please do let me know your suggestions in the comments. But for today, that is going to be it. So if you have enjoyed the episode, likes, comments and shares are greatly appreciated. I'm really having fun with this vanilla build and it seems like you guys are too. So thank you so much for the support on the series so far. But that's all from me for now. So thank you so much for tuning in and I'll catch you again next time. Bye bye.